welcome to today. I'm Amanda and I'm taking you on my 31 days of essential tools and supplies. My essential tools and supplies may be different from yours, um, but today we're going to be playing with... So let's get started. Hello and... Hello and welcome to 31 days of um, art studio essentials. Now I have taken a bit of a break and so um, I thought I would just complete the series. Um, it was hanging over my head um, and there's, there's still so many more things. It's more than 31, but these were just, you know, the first 31 that are really essential. Anyway, so without going on too much, um, I wanted to show you um, these, like, so I've got a selection of cutting utensils. So knives, scissors are important in all of my mixed media work, um, whether I'm working with fabric or paper. Um, I used to do a lot of card baking. I've got a, a sample of one that I have made. It just needed the front. Um, but I would do a lot of cutting, cutting out, um, you know, I would create, create stamps, use a stamped image, and then like this has been um, stamped with um, the, what's the ink called? Is it, oh, not archival ink, it's called pigment ink. So it dries slower and then I've added embossing powder and I just actually really need to um, heat this with a heat gun. Um, but my heat gun isn't here at the moment. I do so many different things and um, got so many different things kind of like on the go. It's like thinking, oh, I need a bigger space, but really I don't. I just need to be more focused. Anyway, so, and that's a good example. So, well, it's an example of, you know, cards that I would cut and things like that. So I've got a variety. I've got the standard scissors and what they say, um, if you're using scissors with paper and fabric, have separate, um, have separate scissors for both because um, the scissors will become dulled. I think it's when you're using the fabric, I'm not sure, but to cut fabric, you need a sharp pair of scissors. So I have, yeah, a different set of scissors that I've got with my fabric supplies. And these are just ones that I have here that if I'm cutting paper or anything else. Um, so that's just one of the, examples and then I've got these small ones now I can't remember where I got this one this is actually a folding scissors like a traveling scissors that you get in like a makeup kit but I never used it um, for that kind of purpose I used it if I was trying to um, you know cut smaller pieces of paper and I needed to kind of get round detail and these are the same I think this is just like a child's one because it's got rounded um, End. And then you've got this one, which is for, you know, when you're cutting like um, baby's nails. So I think maybe when I was cutting, when my son was born. So it is that old, um, you're talking 20 odd years, 20 years, say maybe. Yeah, no, but when he was a baby. Anyway, so these scissors are curved slightly um, at the tip and it's really to kind of well, for baby scissors, so it doesn't cut the baby's, you know, it doesn't cut into the skin if the baby's going to move or whatever. You know, it's having a manicure. Um, so again, I use these in the studio um, for fine work. It's just like, you've got them, so why not use them? And then the other things I've got here are your basic Stanley knife. So I've got... <laughs> that one's not working. <laughs> It's probably just come away from the, um, it's probably just come away from the thing, so I need to sort that out anyway. This is uh, the latest one that I brought, and um, I really like this one. It's got the blade um, is separate, separated. Should we come in? Uh, the blade, so when you're ready to, um, get another sharpened blade like for this particular one whatever I was doing um, it lobbed off the end of that blade and so all I would do is pull this down until you get to the perforated end and I really hate this bit because I think it's so dangerous 
um, and you're supposed to kind of use, you know, applies, I guess, to kind of break it. Um, and that's, I guess, that's what I've done in the past. But this doesn't seem to, it's not lining up. Maybe you do it like that. Anyway, I really don't like, I don't, I don't like having to break them off. But um, yeah, using a pliers, flat nose pliers, that'll probably be the best bet. But I do like it that, you know, I don't have to have um, separate cases of um, the knives. And um, this has lasted me quite a while and it does cut through, it's, it is very sharp. And it's got this, um, you know, where you can bring it up and tighten it. And obviously for safety, you would put it down like that. So that's one of the larger ones. For smaller ones, I've got, again, a similar kind of, um, I've had this one for, for the longest, um, but it's a smaller blade, which is useful, um, which I guess if you compare the two, you know, again, for cutting, uh, when you're doing paper cutting or anything small in the studio. I guess um, the ones I use now a lot are the bigger ones um, when I was doing like art journaling and book binding or anything to do with paper um, or cutting several layers of paper I would use the the uh, bigger one but they're never going to be you know you're always going to use them or find it use for them um, then the others that I've got are these ones which they um, when I used to work for a, a um, company called the Design Council, which then we were all made redundant and they had an education team and they were just chucking out a lot of the um, stuff that the design team, like everybody had gone and then there were just like loads of stuff just laying around. And so we were able to, um, you know, utilize some of the, the stuff. It was, you know, just, you know, a few knives and kind of sticky back paper and things like that and paper. And um, these come with, um, they come in variety of sizes and the smallest one, actually, I don't think, no, these, this, these particular ones are not for any of these knives. The one that this is for, I can't find the knife, but I'll, it's just like the one time you're looking for something and you can't find it. I know it's, it's amongst my stuff. Anyway, so um, all of the replacement blades are like this and they come in smaller sizes. They come in several different sizes. And so I've got two sizes and they are, they are extremely sharp. And so these are really good for the finer detailed work, you know, creating cards and things like that. So that's what I use it for. And they're very easy to take apart. Um, I've never cut myself with them, um, despite, you know, how they look. But um, I don't even know whether they're like, you know, the, the same ones that they would use in the hospitals, you know, and they say, scalpel. <laughs> anyway, so that's that. And then these, um, and this is again, I've only known it for, for cutting paper and you wouldn't, when you look at it, you wouldn't think that there was um, a knife in there, but I don't know how close you'll be able to, s right, okay. Maybe not that one. Maybe you. It's not that easy. It's got a really, really. Oh, you can see it. Anyway, just here, just there, is a really tiny blade. And um, it's just like a quick cutter to cut things really quickly. I've never actually taken this. I don't know whether they're replaceable. I just, I'm, I don't even know where I get them from, where I got them from. But, um, oops, no, that's not even any good. Sorry about this. Okay, anyway. So yeah, they cut paper. Um, it's, as I say, a very tiny blade and I'm just looking for something to cut. Let me see this. Or score so there you go it's a really really tiny blade and you have to be so careful 
you know, it can it scores, I guess. And I guess if you um, did it harder, you could actually cut through the paper. Let me see. No, it just scores it, but it's good because, you know, it, it gives you a... If you wanted to fold the paper over and have a nice clean edge, um, it can do that for you. Let us have a look at maybe a piece of paper like this and see. Because it's, it's always good to, um, that's my ruler, experiment. So we can see how it, oh yeah, so paper, it will cut it, you know, if you want to cut, if you want to cut paper, and uh, let's see what the others are saying, because you can't actually, you can just see the very tip of the blade, and you can hear it, so that one is the lowest. And this one, yeah, so as you can see, they're just, I, I, I can't remember where I've got them from. Maybe I just inherited them. My dad had a lot of stuff, but um, when he passed, he, um, I kind of wanted to hold on to everything. We couldn't let anything go. And over the years, found um, different things that I now use in the studio, um, uh, like oh, like my clock. Love this clock. It's a wind. You have to wind it every twelve hours, or twenty-four hours. It's a twenty-four hour clock. But um, this was my dad's, and some other tools that I use. Power tools as well, um, and just random things that. I now, and I probably got these from him, um, that I now um, use in the studio. Anyway, so, cutting utensils are an essential for me. And um, as I say, you know, if you're using, uh, if you're doing mixed media then and using fabric, then have a separate um, a pair of scissors, you know, you can get, and get yourself a good pair of scissors, especially when you're working with fabric. But um, yeah, have have different sets so that they're not dullened. And um, yeah, just be careful with your fingers. <laughs> All right, so thanks for joining me um, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care for now. Bye.